Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you for attending this talk. Today, I will talk about online learning via offline greedy algorithms with applications in market design and optimization. This is a joint work with brought from U Chicago, my advisor Nagin at MIT, and Josh and Ashwin from Google. So we'll start with some motivation. Nowadays, um, marketplaces need to make certain decisions repeatedly over time under uncertainty that also changes over time. So for example, in the assortment planning problem, a store needs to decide on which items to offer to the customers to maximize their market share. Yet the store doesn't know what the customers want ahead of time. Also, customer preferences and tastes are changing over time. We see a similar issue in the product ranking problem, where we want to show the most relevant products to customers, but customers have limited patience and attention. They usually only look at the products on the first few pages or even only look at the top uh, few products on the first page. So how can a platform display products to maximize the chance that customer finds something that they like? Here, customers' demand and preferences are also unknown and changing over time. Another example in the marketplace setting is the ads auction, where a platform wants to set personalized reserve prices for each advertiser in a way that extracts the most revenue or welfare, uh, but without knowing the valuation of each advertiser. So there are three common fundamental challenges that all of these examples face. The first one is uncertainty, because they need to learn the best, co the best course of actions without knowing the demand function. The second one is time varying because the underlying environments keep on changing over time. And the last one is combinatorial. So even without uncertainty, the offline problems are NP hard to solve. Um, but if you look closely, there are actually greedy heuristics uh, available for all of these examples. Now, going to our research question, so we want to investigate how can we design learning algorithms for such combinatorial problems? Can we efficiently transform uh, existing approximation offline algorithms to their online counterparts such that we maintain the approximation factor and we get sublinear regret? And the answer is yes, yes we can. Uh, if not, this paper would not have any results, but yeah, we can do so for a large class of offline problems that admit a robust greedy algorithm with a constant approximation factor. So all of the combinatorial examples that I mentioned before actually uh, have this property. And I will use uh, one of the previous examples, which is the assortment planning problem to explain more about the characteristic of the problems that fit uh, to our framework and illustrate our technique. Uh, so I'll start by explaining the assortment planning problem. So in the assortment planning problem, we have N products. Uh, we want to choose a set S of products with size at most K that maximizes the market share or the probability of purchase uh, in this case. So here F of S is the probability that at least one of the products in S is purchased. And we assume that F is a monotone submodular function. Um, we want to find the optimal set of products, uh, S star, that maximizes F of S. So this is how we define our offline problem. So actually, there is a classic algorithm uh, by Nam Hoster et al. Uh, it's a classic greedy algorithm that gives an approximation factor of 1 minus 1 over epsilon and its type. Um, the greedy algorithm is... Uh, this is the greedy algorithm for the problem. So it starts with an empty set, and then it divides the problem into k subproblems, where in each subproblem, the algorithm adds a new product to the previous set. So um, to decide which product should be added next to the previous set, the algorithm greedily picks the product that maximizes the marginal market share given the set S so far. So we can think of the algorithm as building the solution stage by stage or subproblem by subproblem, where at each stage, it picks one product that maximizes the marginal market share. And uh, so if we consider the online version of the problem, uh, where there are T periods, and in round T, nature or, or adversary chooses a monotone submodular market share function f of t, and uh, the algorithm or the decision maker uh, chooses like which assortment or S of T to offer, right? Without knowing the function F of T. Now, um, then the algorithm would obtain the market share or the reward F of T of S of T afterwards. At the end of each round, the algorithm gets feedback. It either observes the whole F of T function 
uh, this is the case for the full information setting, uh, or it observes uh, just the value, which is f of t of s of t in the banded setting. Um, so in this talk, we would focus on the full information setting. And the goal of the online problem is to minimize the regret with respect to gamma times the optimal opt. So like here, the optimal is the maximum objective value of choosing the same set S on each round, given that we know all of the market share functions, like all of the F of these beforehand. And the regret will then be the difference between gamma times the optimal and the sum of our rewards. Um, after laying out the problem setting, I will talk about our main results and contributions. So we designed an efficient framework to transform offline greedy-based algorithms to their low-regret online counterparts via Blackwell approachability for both full information and banded feedback settings. And generally, we have square root of t gamma regret for full information and t to the two-third gamma regret for the banded setting. Now, in our running example from before, which is equivalent with uh, the problem of maximizing a monotone set submodular function with respect to cardinality constraints. We match the previous gamma regret bound by Streeter and Golovin for the full information setting, and we improve their bound in terms of T for the banded setting. Now, our framework has a wide range of applications, ranging from product ranking, risk of price optimization, to non-monotone submodular maximization for both discrete and continuous cases. So here are the bounds. Um, as you can see, it's really exciting that for all these problems, our bound improves the best prior ones. Um, for the full information setting, we have square root of the dependency for most applications. And for the banded settings, we have t to the two third for discrete case and t to the four fifth dependency for the continuous case. So it's because we need to do some discretization for the continuous case. So the dependency on t is worse. Um, most of the banded problems actually have not been studied before, even though they capture more realistic scenarios. Now, I will go quickly over some related works. In the area of offline to online transformation, um, Hazan and Koren presented a negative result saying that uh, no offline to online framework can exist for general combinatorial problems. Then Kala and Vampala and Dudik et al., uh, they presented an offline to online framework for offline problems that can be solved efficiently. Um, then Kakade et al., uh, also, provided a framework for offline problems with linear rewards. In terms of combinatorial learning literature, previous works mainly focused on linear rewards. On the other hand, we focus on NP hard problems with nonlinear rewards in both banded and full information settings. So, in particular, we don't need the offline problem to be efficiently solvable, but we narrow the space of the general combinatorial problems by only looking at the problems that uh, admit offline greedy heuristics. Now, for the rest of the talk, I will explain the high level idea of our algorithm for the full information setting. Uh, I don't think I have time to talk about the bandit setting, but uh, feel free to read the paper if you're interested. Uh, let's revisit the greedy algorithm that we have for the assortment planning problem, where there are k sub problems, and for each sub problem, the algorithm picks a product z of i that maximizes the marginal market share delta f. So in this notation, delta f is a function of the current set and an item, and it is the marginal market share of adding a product j to s. Um, if we define a factor valued function called payoff, which is a function of a product, uh, the current set, and the market share function f this way, then we can see that choosing the product z of i that maximizes the marginal market share delta f is actually equivalent with choosing z of i such that the uh, payoff function here is all non-negative. Why? Because the jth coordinate of this factor function is the difference between the marginal market share of uh, when z of i is added and the marginal market share when product j is added. Now, the problem is that this payoff function is not linear in the greedy decision z of i. Uh, to solve that, we consider a distribution over all products for each subproblem. So instead of picking one product, the subproblem picks a distribution over all items and maximizing the expected marginal market share. Um, 
So sub problem i picks theta i instead of z of i, and we replace the uh, marginal market shell delta f with expected marginal market share, uh, where the expectation is over the distribution theta i. Always speaking, z of i is actually equivalent with putting mass equal to one for z of i and zero for other uh, products. And the payoff function is the same as before, uh, where we replace uh, delta f with the expected uh, delta f. Now the, fun uh, the payoff function is linear in terms of theta i, which is the greedy decision. This greedy algorithm is also robust to local errors, meaning that replacing the locally optimal decisions with almost locally optimal decisions do not um, propagate the errors. So as you can see, for the errorless system, if we have non-negative payoff at each time, then the final set chosen is a gamma approximation, right? But for the system with local errors, if theta i is replaced with its noisy version, which is uh, theta i tilde, such that the payoff is always greater than zero, uh, plus minus some epsilon error, then uh, the final uh, set chosen would be at least gamma times optimal minus epsilon times k, where k is the number of subproblems. So not all greedy algorithms are robust. Moreover, we actually need a stronger version of this robustness, which we call extended robust, well, where the errors still do not propagate if we sum them over all rounds. So if we consider a noisy run of the algorithms over t rounds, and for each subproblem, the sum of the payoff is at most error of t away from optimal, then the final sum of the rewards over t runs would be at most k times error of t away from gamma optimal if the greedy algorithm is extended robust. So essentially, um, if the aggregate error for every coordinate is small, then the algorithm will still do well. Now, going back into our high-level idea, so in the offline problem, because we know the function f before making each decision, right? the greedy algorithm can actually pick the optimal theta, uh, theta i for each subproblem. But the online in the online problem, we don't know f of t, let's say in round t before making decision. So we need a subroutine for each subproblem that can return a distribution theta, theta t tilde such that the overall error made by each subproblem is not big. At most error of t, where error of t grows like, uh, grows like square root of t. So if error of t grows uh, like square root of t, then by the extended robustness property, we would get a k, k times square root of t gamma regret. Now, the question is that, how can we design an algorithm for each subproblem such that error of t grows like square root of t? And the answer is Blackwell approachability. Uh, to explain Blackwell approachability, I will go briefly into Blackwell sequential games. So, it is a repeated two-player zero-sum game with vector-valued rewards. Uh, on each round t, player one plays x of t, and player two plays y of t. Then player one obtains some reward uh, r of x of t and y of t, um, and player two obtains like the negative of it because it's zero-sum. Uh, the reward here r, like the reward r here is a vector. Uh, it's actually a biaffine function of the actions, which are x of t and y of t. Now. In a Blackwell game, uh, player one wants to approach a convex set S and player two wants to prevent this from happening. Uh, a convex and close uh, target set S is G of T approachable if there exists a strategy for player one such that whatever player two plays, the L infinity distance between the average vector valued reward and S is upper bounded by G of T. And ideally you want G of T to go to zero uh, as t goes to infinity, because that means that the average vector value reward is getting closer and closer to s. Now, there's another notion of approachability, which we call one round approachability, where a set s is one round approachable if for every action that player two plays, there exists an action that can be played by player one such that the reward factor is in s. Now, the approachability theorem says that for any um, one round approachable set S, there is an algorithm of B such that S is also G of T approachable in a T round game. Uh, 
Now uh, look, uh, see that like g of t here is it, it grows like t to the minus one half. Um, now we will uh, utilize alpha of b in designing our subroutine. So if we revisit the high level idea, right? We replace the greedy step with a subroutine such that over t rounds, error of t would be uh, square root of t. Now, to do so, we let alpha of b handles each subproblem. So we have one alpha of b instance for each subproblem. We can think of each subproblem as a black wall game where uh, player one is our algorithm and player two is nature, giving us like the delta f function. Um, and the reward factor is then the payoff function here. And because we want our payoff to be non-negative, we set our target set to be the positive, to be the non-negative or thin, and we want it to be approachable, right? And if S is one round approachable, then we can use alt B from before such that error of D grows like square root of D, and that's what we want. Now, the remaining question is that how do these black wall subroutines communicate with each other, right? It is actually based on the original greedy algorithm. So for each round, after the algorithm runs k arc of b's, um, arc of b's, then it gets the final set, it submits it, and it gets back the f of t function. It returns the f of t function to each of the arc of b subroutine. Now, our analysis shows that if each alpha of b accumulates error that is upper bounded by a square root of t log n, then the total gamma regret will be upper bounded by k times square root of t log n. Um, and this is a more general version, which says that if an offline greedy algorithm is extended robust and Blackwell reducible, where Blackwell reducibility makes sure that each problem can be handled uh, by, repli or by replacing the greedy step with a Blackwell subroutine, then there exists an online algorithm that runs in polynomial time and gives a square root of d gamma regret. Uh, I will conclude uh, now. So, so we design an efficient framework to transform offline greedy algorithms to their online counterparts that have low regret via Blackwell approachability for both full information and bandage feedback settings. Um, the greedy algorithm has to be extended robust and Blackwell reducible for the full information setting or banded Blackwell reducible for the banded setting. We have square root of the regret for the full information setting in general and t to the two third regret for the banded setting. Um, but the most exciting part is that our framework is flexible and has many applications from product ranking uh, to research price optimization in auctions and submodular maximization. Uh, the, uh, it also improves uh, the regret bounds for many applications. Yep, so that concludes my talk. Um, this is the link to the paper and uh, this is my email in case if you have any questions or comments. Thank you.